Good afternoon and welcome to part two of Wellness From Within. This is our second show in a uh, series that we hope are gonna go on for a very long time. There's a lot of information. There's a lot of different people we wanna talk to. Marie has just been chomping at the bit to do one of these shows and I am super excited to be able to go along with this journey with her. And today is our first guest, Miss Rebecca Packard. So welcome to the show. I'm gonna talk a little bit about Miss Rebecca. So Rebecca does emotional code and body code healing. And this assists people in releasing trapped emotions without having to relive the events that created them. Alternative medicine, there are cer certifications, excuse me, in her line of work, you can self-practice you can have a practice with clients, and there are many, many ways you can use your certification. Important information when you are looking for somebody that you wanna be working with. Um, to find more information, you can visit discoverhealing, that's one word, dot com. Discover Healing by Dr. Brad Nelson. If you wanna find out more about Rebecca, you can visit rebeccapackard.com, and I will repeat this at the end of the show. And if you are searching the internet, you can put a keyword emotion, well, it's two words actually, emotional code. It's a worldwide practice of about 8,000 practitioners. So it's not some little obscure little practice. It's not covered by insurance due the, to the limitations of alternative therapies. And with that, welcome to the show, Miss Rebecca. And thank you for being here, Miss Marie. All right. So why don't we dive on in? Would you like to start? Sure. Cool. Okay. So um, does your modality work with other modalities? Like, do you complement other types of therapy that people are using? Yes, absolutely. In my own practice, I use a meditation. I use emotion freedom tapping, uh, jinsen jitsu, and even yoga. Um, it is so what about if somebody's using different like they're taking supplements they're in cancer treatments they're using a practitioner those kinds of things yes is absolutely. there any things that you can't work alongside no so it's just more of a support system it's a definite support system i have clients who are in chemotherapy i work with um, women who are going through their birth space um, so like supporting doulas and helping women um, in the birth space um, I have worked with people who are post treatment for heart surgeries, lung surgeries, knee replacements. It's um, a really great support for those spaces because of how it helps your body just really be open to healing what caused the injury, but also accepting any parts you may have gotten from somebody else. <laughs> so, uh, Could you explain that? Um, so everybody has their own vibrational frequency. I like to call this your silent vibrational frequency. And if I took your lung and put it in my body, your lung is carrying your different emotions that we oh, store in the Oh, so you mean if somebody's had a transplant. Yeah. That, okay. And then, I was like, make parts from someone else. How would they do that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So it's from so, a transplant. I get yes, that. Yes. Transplant. Yeah. I know so, Ledger talked a lot about that in his work as yeah. well, the vibration of that. Okay. So yeah. I understand that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if somebody's looking to find a practitioner in the emotional code, what are they looking for? Like if they talk to them, what makes a good practitioner? Because you know as well as I, everybody has their own way of looking at life. And you want to make sure that you're getting a practitioner that's seeing the benefits of the... the, the maybe the current therapies that you're in right now. Well, no, like... Or there's many people that do Reiki, but there's in different interpretations to Reiki to every practitioner who does it. Yeah, absolutely. So, so I would say from my own personal experience in being in formal medicine and in alternative medicine, the number one thing is if you are going to work with someone, do you like them? Like when you okay. sit down with them, do you go, oh, I'm comfortable with you? Or are you like, because if you are, like, that's probably not the practitioner you want to work with. You don't want to be stressed out. Like, right. if you are somebody who's a laid-back human, but your practitioner is high-strung, it's not going to be probably the best Shit. working environment or healing environment for you. So first, just that. Okay, so how do I feel in the room with you? Am I comfortable with you? Do I feel like I want to share my life story with you? Because some really, they, there's some deep stuff that comes up, even if you're like, well, I'm here for toe pain. Who knows where that's going to go? Like, we could come up with some really different 
right. directions for that. So do you want to be able to share those stories with that person? The other thing is, is are they practicing what they're preaching? Like, are they, okay, that's a, a really good one. like, yeah. are they practicing what they're preaching? If you're going to somebody and they're not even practicing their own practice, then what's that all what's about? What's that about? Mm. <laughs> That's a very good point. Very good point. I emotion code every single day, like, because right. <laughs> it's that beneficial. But that is like uh, when I go to a doctor, if I'm going to see a doctor and he's telling me I need to lose weight, mm, okay, um, kettle black, okay. So like, <laughs> no, so that's very, like, um, I, I start point. with those very simple things first, and then okay, are they certified? How long have they been in practice? Go on their Google sheet. What's the reviews say? What are people okay. saying about them in other spaces? What does it say in their, like, do they have a testimonial page on their website? Find out what are people saying? Like, are people saying nice things about them? That's important. Or is nobody saying anything about them? Right. I've, like, what is their history? How long have they been doing this? Has this been a bigger part of their life? And are they doing this for them? Or are they doing this for you? Because right. sometimes you'll get with someone and they'll start to work with you and they'll be like, I offer this and I offer this and I offer this and I offer this and I'll need to see you again and I'll need this, this, this. And and like, okay, sometimes that is amazingly beneficial. But like, if you're like, well, I am here. This is what my focus is. This is the only thing I want to work on. Then, then you don't want to be, be yeah. being pushed to all these other exactly. things. So if they're just like, in it for that or are they like let me listen to exactly what you have to say let me take in what you're saying let me listen to the outline of okay so you're saying this this and this okay well this is what that looks like or this is how we can make that work does that sound good for you okay awesome nice. like nice that's how i look at it and it's I a feel working like relationship it should be a working mm. relationship it shouldn't be like walking into walmart and buying a pair of shoes but it also shouldn't be like sitting down with a car salesman <laughs> So, right. <laughs> a happy balance of all the things. <laughs> right. So, is there bias toward your modality? Do people have their own little weirdness that they? Yeah. I know. <laughs> I know. I get doesn't. it. I know. I get it. I mean, for me, <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes it takes two years for the husband to walk through the door, or the spouse to walk through the door, or the son to walk through the door, and the first thing they say is. Not at all what I thought. You're not. You don't right. look like it. You don't act like it. You're not at all what I thought. Exactly. This isn't at all what I thought. The minute they hear energy medicine, they think this woo-woo thing. And right. That, you know. Literally, have had people be yeah. like, "And I'm gonna say it, and somebody's gonna be offended, and it's okay. You can be offended. I love you where you're at." I have had people walk in and go, well, you're not the dirty hippie I thought you were going to exactly. be. Exactly. And I'm like, no, I, exactly. I don't smell of patchouli and have yeah, dreadlocks exactly. and corduroys. <laughs> like, that's not my yep. life. It was when I was 13. It's not anymore. I will own that. But, um, yes, people, I have had people who didn't want to work with me because of a plethora of things. I can't see what you're doing. No, you cannot. <laughs> it is not a tangible thing. It is not something you're going to be able to hold but you will feel it you will know it's happening you will know that something has changed the other thing is is that some people are just really really um focused on a stereotype of a social decision and so some people because of religious beliefs or because of personal practices they won't work with me and that's okay. You do you, I'll do me. Right. And that's what works. Like right. you don't have to, I'm not going to make anybody do this. And, um, but I also don't think other people should push other people away from right. people if this is what works for them. Right. Which is what we were speaking about earlier in the first half of the show, right and wrong. There is no right or wrong no. for any one person or any one modality. Absolutely. But yet both of you deal with that oh, probably on a day. daily every basis every day. Day. Stop. every day yeah. yeah yeah and i think it's sad for me because a lot of my clients who benefit immensely and it's changed their lives and it's helped them heal all kinds of things they can't share it with their family a lot of them they keep it under wraps because they're afraid of the recourse the repercussions yeah. yeah yeah um and that's a conversation that more and more people should have. And I love that it is becoming a more open conversation. Mm -hmm. And like this show will bring about opening the door to that conversation because 
The other part of that is, is you don't have to like what somebody else is doing. Don't do it. Right. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. It's not for you. (laughs) Right. But if it works for them, don't put them down because it works for them. I had a personal injury and I went to a chiropractor for three times a week for two and a half years. I went to physical therapy for four times a week for two and a half years. I sat on my couch non-ambulatory for four years while I had infants. And I went to acupuncture twice a week for three and a half years. Nothing touched my injury. I was doing Reiki, I was doing yoga, I was meditating, I was tapping, I was doing Jinsen Jitsu, I was doing anything people threw at me. Here's an oil, okay, let me put it on. I did everything. Emotion code was the only thing that made my pain go away and made it capable for me to walk. Because I couldn't. Wow. So that's, you don't have and, to and like somebody else's. the take home. Yeah. Even for me with the paralyzed muscles on my right side. And mm-hmm. I mean, I was one of 14 in the entire country. There wasn't even a treatment protocol for me. And then the treatments that did occur were just making it worse and yeah. worse. And I was flat on my back for years on the floor with the kids playing around me. Right. Went back to school for my exercise science degree and nothing worked. And I had to figure it out. And yeah. it was all in here. So people poo poo a lot of the modalities that are all inside. But we have an inner strength within us that is so powerful that we can overcome almost anything if you're willing to go there. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm on some stuff on Instagram and everything else, and it saddens me to see all these people wanting likes for having a bad day. Yeah. And they, it just feeds them and feeds Mm -hmm. them and feeds them because they, the the worse they feel, the more likes they're going to get. Yeah. Instead of saying, what do I need to do? What do I need to do for myself? And most of them say, I'll try anything. I'll try anything. And because I've been in that situation, I've even reached out and said, look, I'm not asking for any money. I want to offer you this. Not even a response because they won't try anything. They think either I'm trying to scam them or I'm trying to do something or there's something inside of them that pushes away. I mean, you can see my website. I'm legit. I'm not a scammer. Mm. But I think it just scares people and the victim modality has to go. We have to step up into our personal power. Mm. So on that same note, so being the third person here as we're comparing injuries, and it's not right. a one-upsmanship, no. but yeah. injured on the job, and I went the route of multiple 15 surgeries right. and, and started working with Rebecca because nothing was working. The, the surgeries fixed what was broken. Right. But there's all there's, there's a whole there, bunch there's left a, there's a whole bunch that. more left to go yes. that you can function. Yes. Um, and so worked with Rebecca and 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 then I was left with um, well you can have you know the six inch giant Botox jabs into you and I and they work the first time they don't work the they second time yeah. and you're left there going I don't know I don't mm-hmm. know and I met Marie. Yeah. And come to find out Marie had the same, same injuries injury. mm-hmm. had gone through a surgery, which was going to be my next step and said, mm-hmm. let's think on this a little bit. And that's what paralyzed my right side going through the surgery. Correct. Right. So, yeah. well, and I wasn't even a surgical candidate. They just yeah. wanted me to continue to have pain shots in my hip till, and they literally walked me through, you'll have pain shots every six months for the rest of your life. And when the scar tissue gets too big, we might be able to remove it. We probably won't because you're not a surgical candidate and where we want to put this. It might make it worse. It might make it better. But then the other thing is, is I was doing all those things. I was pra- doing all the different modalities, doing all the different things. None of those things were touching it because the emotions that were released were not mine. They were inherited from the female line of my family. Not one of them was mine. So I could work on it all I wanted. I wasn't going to fix it because I had inherited it. Wow. Wow. And then you found within that strength Mm -hmm. and that healing and you were able to, I don't know what the wording is I want to say, but reach it? I I Mm. think for me, it's more... 
she does it more on an emotional piece. I do the emotional piece as well, but I do a lot of the physical piece because that is my strong suit. You know, some people call me a medical intuitive because I can see the dysfunction in the physical and I can help the bo the body will guide me into realigning and breaking up the scar tissue and realigning the musculoskeletal along with opening the energy flow because the energy flow is your body. So somehow I'm able to see that and manipulate that really well. I know it's a good Qigong. If you really de delve deep in Qigong, a Qigong master can do the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, but I think be me needing it so badly for myself woke it up inside me because oh. I have people waking it up inside mm -hmm. them all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, I have kids that can do it to themselves now. I have grownups that are doing it to themselves as well. And they just lay there and they can see what's wrong internally and then they can start to manipulate and break their own scar tissue. I mean, I have people with tons of belly scarring. That's the worst thing you can have because mm. it pulls you down. It misaligns your gait. It screws up your shoulders. It screws up your neck. And they're breaking it up themselves by just holding. They're not manipulating and they're not going to twist their organs. Just the energy itself in your focus can go inward and make all these things happen. Mm. And we're so powerful. We're all born with a way to help ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, she found her way. I'm finding my way. And there's many other practitioners that have found their way. That's what the point of this is. There's no one way. Mm -hmm. Our skills develop on our needs. And if we can find as a person watching this what you need, you're going to find that pr practitioner that might have similar needs that you had. And you'll work really good alongside them. You know, medicine is really important as well. I don't discount anything as a gift because if it's in the universe, it's a gift. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you need the medicine. I mean, I still use the medicine when I need it. I'm not opposed to it. Mm -hmm. You know, um, the alternative medicine is great too, but that is not, that is such a small box because the alternative just gives you supplements like the docs give you pills. It, it's so short-sighted mm -hmm. into the whole picture of healing. And it can be, like she said, other people's stuff. Because, you know, you're afraid of spiders. Your mother's afraid of spiders. Your grandmother's afraid of spiders. You never even saw a spider. Why are you afraid? It carries. <laughs> a lot of these patterns carry. And sometimes you don't know why you're in the right or wrong because they just carried through generations. And if you can sit with it, you can start to heal those things inside of yourself. And you can break down a lot of barriers and start self-healing at a deeper level. I mean... Again, it goes back to what do you what do you define healing for yourself? Because again, some people might want to just fix the ankle and be done with it. Mm -hmm. Some people might want to just open themselves to a new way and just be happier inside. So, so talk to me a little bit to understand what emotion code and and the healing is. I, I well, go through I a typical understand. session. Yeah. Go through a typical session. So, a typical session. So, first of all, I don't do um, one on one in person. Okay. My one-on-one -on -one is via Zoom. Um, some practitioners see people in person. I don't do that because um, I don't have to. Uh, so I either you either come to a session with me on the phone or on Zoom or 100% full distance. Either way, I am going to go through this as we start the session at the time that it's at, and I welcome you in. We do a clearing that helps connect the energy for each other better so that you're going to be able to release more. So you're going to have, I call it the reset and rebalance phase is going to go with ease and grace. Um, and then we go into emotion code. And if we're on the phone or if we're on a Zoom, uh, we'll have a conversation. What are we working on? What do you want to look at? And I'll start releasing emotions. I usually I have a list of um focus spaces and I have a huge amount of questions that I ask very quickly that take me through those spaces and I using kinesiology and intuition find the emotions that are in that space and then release the emotions um, as we're talking about those things other things might come up and so in that conversation um, I like to call, <laughs> say I'm kind of like Alice following the rabbit down the hole other things come up those are usually attached to the emotions that we're releasing and so we follow those because sometimes people are like, well, I don't know why I need to tell you that like when I was six years old, I was on the bus, someone stole my Kit Kat and I was so angry. And I'm like, I, let's go there because <laughs> clearly that's where we're working. And so we release the emotions. When we get to the end, can I, I just interrupt her a second? Mm -hmm. So you went back to the six-year-old Kit Kat. I just want to give an example of how powerful that is. Mm -hmm. I mean, I used to have a dream and I used to wake up 
in the night and cold sweats and it was in Manchester and I was on the dam somewhere on a ledge on the Amoskeag Dam and I was going to fall in the water and drown. So every time I drove by that dam I would have the chills through my whole early 20s. I would have these dreams all the time. And then one day I'm at, my daughter has, she's in first grade and I've got all these five-year-olds going on a field trip to the Amoskeag Dam. And I've never seen this ledge before, no matter how many times I drove by it. <laughs> so next thing you know, we're inside, we go out the back door, and we're standing on this ledge in my dream. So now my heart stops. So these kids never left my side, I can tell you. We've just been like that. So I leave there, and I'm almost in tears, and I stop at my parents' house, and I go to my, my father, goes, what is wrong? And I tell him the story, and he smiles. And I go, what's so funny? He goes, Pepe used to work there, and when you were a year old, they used to bring you out on that ledge, and you used to scream your head off at the water, and we had to bring you inside because you were so afraid. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and so if, it if matters. You, and if it you carry matter. that, if you carry that, my first child almost drowned twice in swimming lessons before I found this out, and my second one never had swimming lessons. So my fear of water just kept mm -hmm. magnifying mm -hmm. until I never had a dream since that day because it released, released that it. memory and it was mm -hmm. over with. Because it was acknowledged. So we don't even know those things that we carry because as a child you have an interpretation, mm -hmm. but that's not how life works. It's the mm -hmm. only thing you had at the time. It was scary. It was loud. And it, yeah. yeah. So she's absolutely right because I've experienced it myself through my own work and doing it. Wow. Yeah. But yeah, things... There's so many things as a child that your parents think you know what they're saying, but you, don't. you have your own interpretation, and that's what carries you on how you look at life. So I always asked my kids, I was really big about it, if I said something, what, it, what did I say? I'd make them explain it back, because mm -hmm. whatever's going on in their head is not what you said, and mm -hmm. that's going to carry them making decisions later in life. Wow. Yeah. So, I'm sorry. I, didn't well, mean, and I the, just wanted to. And the fact that you were having an inc an extreme emotional response, and at that point in time, they were like, okay, let's just come inside <laughs> instead of what's happening in your head. Exactly. Or, I understand you're terrified right now. I'm really sorry. You don't right. need to be afraid. I'm right here. And this is just water. And this is just or water this is just, or yeah. like an explanation. So you hold on to that. And our body creates a chemical lock. So it's not just emotional. When you have an emotion that happens in an organ system, that organ system releases hormones, those hormones get locked into your body. So until you release that and come to a space of safety again, which releases another different set of hormones that rinses that out of your body, you're carrying that. And so it, so then while we're releasing the emotions and going through that, then when we get to the end or we have released all the emotions in that space, I then just walk them through what does the next 24 to 72 hours look like? This is your reset and rebalance time. You're mm -hmm. going to want to drink a lot of water. You're going to want to just have grace with yourself. Um, I'll follow up with you in the next 24 hours. And then also just in the next four to seven days, acknowledge what's different. You're going to notice things right away. But if we're working on, like for people, we release heart walls or we, I work a lot with people about their relationships or about being angry. Lots of people are angry these days um, and they want to get rid of it. And I'm like, so look, what's the things that used to trigger you? Are they still triggering you? Has that conversation changed? Are you sitting in the car having road rage? I've worked with a lot of road ragers these days. And I'm like, how many times did you yell at the traffic? They were like, oh my God, I didn't yell at the traffic once this week. And I was like, that's fantastic. You didn't work from home, right? They're like, no, I went in every <laughs> single day. And I'm like, and you used to. And it's, it's what we were talking about earlier. It's that reaction that you're into. Yeah. And until you figure out why you're reacting, you're not going to change it. So you have to be yeah. able to get to the point where you can observe yourself and see. And she's helping them do that. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's amazing. So in the last two minutes that we have, how can people find you? I am, can be found on the internet at RebeccaPacker.com. I have a podcast called Rebecca Packard Live Free. You can listen to it on um, Apple, iPad, uh, any, any carrier of a podcast system. Um, and I'm on Instagram at Rebecca Packard NH and on Facebook at Rebecca Packard. So we just put in Rebecca Packard and you're going to you pop up. And you will find me. If you Google Rebecca Packard, you'll find all the places you can find me. I love that. And Miss Marie. I'm at Marie Notig, K-N-O-E-T-I-G dot com. 
And yeah, I have a Facebook and Instagram, Body Within Healing, because again, it's all about going inward and tapping. I love so, it. Yeah, but we're, yeah. And this is all about everybody finding their place. Finding the path, that getting on that path, for them. and what, what and works And like I said, you. it's not gonna just be the energy piece here. We're gonna get chiropractors, um, acupuncturists. acupuncturists, massage therapists, try to get a primary care in here. You know, all the different modalities that exist. I have a list of about 100. So it's not just what we think in the mainstream world. There's so many, you know, it could be sound healing. It could be mm -hmm. so many different things. I mean, the ladies who, people who do the bowls. I mean, some people oh, the love singing bowls. that mm -hmm. and just gives a calmness over them. Yeah, we've got crystals, so, we have vibrations. There's we so have many different avenues oils. you can go yeah. that yeah. might feel right for you to find your answers. Like I said, there's no one answer other than you gotta go here first to figure out what you want, how you define healing and start listening to that gut to get you in the right direction. I love it. So you heard it here. I want you to join us the last Wednesday of every month and we will bring a new practitioner, a new modality to you, and you can learn it firsthand here and make your decision. Have a great rest of your week, and we'll see you next time.